Hey everyone, so this is just a fun little video I made. This cube is magnetic on all 12, on all six layers, but there's only 12 magnets in it. You might be wondering, how is that possible? You need 48 to have all the layers fully articulated and magnetic. Well, that's not true, and I'll show you right now. So let's just start off with um, magnets. So magnets have a north and a south side. Um, oh. My hands are dirty because this isn't dirt, this is plastic. It's literally stuck to my skin. Um, but a magnet has a positive and a negative side, or north and south. Now, if this attaches to it, you heard that, you heard that strong attaching. All three, it has to be like positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. But that means if I put it to the other side, it shouldn't attach. What is this wizardry, right? Am I a wizard? Turns out the answer is no, I'm not a wizard. So uh, these aren't actually magnets. These are, they were magnets, but now they're just, they're just worthless metal because these are magnets that I took the magnetism out of. Like I just pulled the magnetic field out of it using a blowtorch, a uh, propane at like 900 degrees. Um, but if you read the black body radiation, it probably got up to like 1,000, 400, 2,000. You can actually tell how hot something is by the shade of red it glows once it gets red hot. Um, but that's a separate topic. Um, once you get magnets that hot, they lose their magnetism. So put it right there. These magnets are getting close to each other, but they don't attract anymore. And that's because um, the dipoles or the electrons are no longer in alignment. Now, when you take a magnet to them, watch what happens. All five. And that picked them up because when the neodymium magnet comes in contact with the metal or like the old non-magnetized magnet, it aligns the dipole to be temporarily magnetic in line with this magnet. And using that, you can actually just have one magnet in the edge and have like either steel or neodymium in the corners, and just like that, it'll attach. And it's not weak either. Like, you can see that. Um, and you could hear that for yourself. I'll put it close to my phone, so. Like, you can hear that. Um, and you might be saying to yourself, well, what if you just put the magnets in the corners? Well, if you have the magnets in a corner, you have a 50-50 chance that the magnets are gonna be positive to positive or negative to negative um, and the same side facing each other. And even like that's about four millimeters away, you can still feel the force and it'll still repel. So doing it in the edges means that they always attract and they always do that temporary dipole in the corner magnet every time. Now, is this practical for normal speed cubing? I don't think so. So like, sure, you could save some money on production costs, but um, the feeling, it's nice. Like the magnet feeling, the cube itself, I drafted that up in like 30, 40 minutes. Um, it's okay. Uh, might be potential with the right cube, but unless you have the right design that's like built specifically for magnets of this radius. Oh, and that was pretty cool. Watch this. These are attracted because they have that temporary dipole when they're touching the magnet, but when they're not touching the magnet, they just fall off. That's wizardry. Um, but yeah, um, personally, I think the best radius is like corner and uh, edge to center. Um, once it gets too deep, you have the torque applied by the turn. It's pretty great and you need really, really strong magnets to feel an appreciable change. And even though the distance between the magnets and the transition isn't like, the transition is reduced and it feels smoother, you get it gets lack, less tactile. And I think there needs to be a balance of tactility. So um, that's it. I got like two more videos I gotta make, but I gotta make those things first. Um, and like, big cool things coming up. So thanks for watching this fun, silly video. Um, this is just a fun little experiment. Oh no, see y'all in the next video, guys.